What's up guys? Y'all know what day it is. When y'all see this good looking truck, you know it's Matt Co. Michael's turn. So let's see what he's got. Come on. Well, that's a black on black, ain't it? So black on black on black. That's it. I'm usually not a fan of the whole same color, but that, I like that. Makes a good and stealth look to it. I, I like that. But, so you got some sitting on the dock, huh? Yeah, I've got two sitting on the dock. Uh, the only bad thing about having two at the same time is I gotta unload that one. That way I can go get two. Sell that sucker. Well. Uh, I plan That's on the it. easiest way. Plan on it. Uh, <laughs> I just got called this morning, so with it being Thanksgiving week and everything, everybody's kind of either not there or got other stuff on their mind right now. So it's yeah. always fun listening to the stories on Thanksgiving. Be uh, be good for somebody to get that for a Christmas present. That's right, and that's normally what happens. We got some sales going on, so we're gonna start them next week, hot and heavy, and try to get rid of because uh, that'll be three boxes that I got. I've actually got one more coming in at some point. So four toolboxes, if I can get rid of all four of them by Christmas, uh, that would be nice. Man, that's a toolbox a week. Well, we're going to try. <laughs> I don't know that's going to happen, but we're going to try. Man, I don't know how good you got to be to get a toolbox for Christmas, but... I've never been that good. I've never I don't know. been that good either. Man. Yep. I've never been that good. That's a sharp box for these guys. Everybody likes black, seems like. Everybody but me. Well, I've noticed that one shows fingerprints a whole lot more. And dust. So, I had to keep it wiped That's out That's the only reason I don't like a dark colored box is the dust. Mine ain't because it's going to get grease and stuff. Because I'm going to keep it wiped down. But... You can't help when you got the doors open, That's truck, right. especially trucks coming in. Well, in Mississippi during pollen weather, there's just about, you can wipe it down three times a day and still leave with it dirty. What drives me insane is you'll have everything clean, sweep the floor and swear up and down it's clean <laughs> until the air brakes pop off and then you find out how much dust gets kicked up and you're like, crap. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a couple of shops I go to, they wash cars outside and it's been a couple of times like, they know and I know I have to pull that air brake and it's like, ah, <laughs> yeah. trying that thing off. You know? yeah. I usually try to sit there five or ten minutes and see if they're going to pull it, you know, out or around or something. That way it's not right there getting soaked. Um, it happens. They got it soaking wet and then I uh, let the dust fly. They, they probably wouldn't be too happy with me. <laughs> So. It's better to do it when it's wet, though, than well, after they don't get it dried and then it you know, gets that's, on it. That's one of those things. Yeah. So the new tool this week is going to be the Quick Flow Brake Filleter. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of interest in this thing. Uh, I tried to hold it for the video. That way I'd have something new. Uh, so mm -hmm. we got a guy that's already spoke up for it, but he was willing to wait. He was taking off the rest of the week anyway, so... Uh, it's got the large capacity container on it, 4.2 quarts. It's got an actual overflow valve built on so it'll prevent spills. I think that's cool. If you've mm -hmm. ever if you've ever worked with these things and it don't have that, you turn around, next thing you notice you got brake fluid everywhere. And I think brake fluid is about the worst thing you can spill. Yeah, um, it's hard to clean up. Well, not only is it hard to clean up, but it'll take paint off and then you get it on the bottom of your shoes and it that deteriorates, whether you believe me or not, it deteriorates the rubber pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, I've lost more pairs of tennis shoes working in shops than I have anything because of that. Um, it uh, has what they call a high efficiency vacuum generator on it, so it's gonna pull a really good vacuum. I think the maximum vacuum, vacuum is like 27 inch. Uh, so that's pretty cool. What kind, how does the, where the hose attaches to the brake bleeder like I've got the um, a different brand of it, and mine, it, you, you got to kind of mess with it. It seems like it wants to lose suction a lot. I have to kind of like pinch around it. And 
yeah to get it to stay on now are you talking about on the this part right here caliper on the brake, yeah, yeah on the brake blade so that one that right there which uh i guess over time that can happen because again you're using brake fluid and stuff um but it looks like it's uh got some reinforcement down in there so it looks like it's gonna be a good type fit i've actually never used this one of course it's brand new so i haven't mm -hmm. used it but I like the quick connection on here. I do uh, too, because mine don't have that. And yeah. To clean the hose out, you have to pull it off the little nipple, you know. To... Yeah, so you had to, uh, the one that we used, you actually had to take a wrench and break it loose. And it had a washer that if you lost the washer, well, now you have no vacuum. So it was just, mm -hmm. it was just overall, which I've seen them. Uh, we had the one that would uh, do it at the caliper. And then we had also the one that would pressurize the system. Push and, it and push it through and that's great too um except for the fact if your bottle is not hooked on good to the caliper it's just gonna make a mess so mm -hmm. uh i think i like this way better well, see i looked at buying the pressurized one when i got the vacuum one and i got i was thinking the same thing i was like man that's way more chances of yeah. something happening and when that happens it's got to get brake fluid at least on the firewall yeah yeah well <laughs> uh the main thing that we noticed with the pressure one whereas this one's pulling it through the system the only point really to leak is at your connection that you was talking about the pressure one uh you don't have that cap good on that master cylinder mm -hmm. you're just like a mess and most of the time you're not going to cut it on to you don't got it up in the air yep. and you're and at that you caliper so you're at the caliper and you're waiting and the next thing you know you see it running down dripping onto the floor so now you've got brake fluid everywhere a mess but also uh, on the good thing about it is it stored brake fluid and it was pressing brake fluid to pressurize it whereas this one you got to be you got to be a little bit more um cautious on okay how much fluid have i took mm -hmm. out compared to how much is in the reservoir yeah. um so as long as you do that make sure that you uh, don't just leave it on there too long uh, I used to just watch for bubbles. That's what I, I mean. Do. It's just a good clean, it good clean hose. Solid. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think that's a huge problem with people running out of black fluid. But man, I have watched people cut that pressurized one on and walk off with it broke loose with a bottle hanging there, and it's like you're just wasting brake fluid. Um, I don't know if they were trying to accomplish something in I general. Just trying to flush a lot of it out. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I know they say if you leave brake fluid in there, that it will. Uh, turn uh the coating of the line and stuff green and stuff and it'll mm. deteriorate the, in the inside of there i understand that as well but what's the difference in just sucking the brake fluid out and then pouring more in and then using this yeah. just enough to get what's in there out i don't, I don't think you have to run through that mm. much brake fluid because so. when i bought that old f-350 it had you know some brake issues on it and the brake fluid was dark and that's what i did is i went to the back passenger caliper yeah i filled the master cylinder up sucked a bunch through topped it off sucked a bunch through and every time i got through you know it was clear back there it didn't take just a few seconds on the driver's side caliper to get it clear yeah and then of course the front two lines wasn't hardly nothing you know but that's what i did actually you know till it was clear in the holes i just kept putting brake fluid in it um yeah and the weird thing about the pressurized one that we had down there um it started with the right front and then you ended with the left front i found that weird that it didn't start at the furthest point mm -hmm. i figured if you started at the furthest point you get more of the bad out right out of the way but i don't know it started started at the 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 front the right front there and went around but i mean i guess a lot of people will tell you you don't even need to do it i disagree i do think you need a brake fluid flush every once in a while mm -hmm. But 90% of our customers are like, brake fluid, brake fluid. Eh. <laughs> you know, and you get the, you get rough sometimes. Well, you, know? you get the, you get the same thing in power steering because most of the time power steering fluid only lasts the first leak and then it gets transmission fluid. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I've never seen it cause any problems, but mm -hmm. you know, you tell people, Hey, you need a power steering flush and they just kind of look at you. So it's, yeah. which I know some's went to the electric style. Uh, they mm -hmm. don't even have fluids, so uh, maybe maybe fluid there is going to the thing of the past. But uh, I was in a parts store recently, getting some oil to do some oil changes on my wife's Tahoe and stuff. And a guy asked me, he said, "Does it matter what style transmission fluid?" <laughs> it's like, well, no. I mean, they got power steering fluid right there, but if you just want, 
Yeah. So I just always put transmission fluid. Well, sure, go with whatever you want then. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that it matters. <laughs> I don't think it does either. But uh, the next thing on this thing is it's got a waste cap. So instead of breaking it all the way down, you got a quick disconnect cap that you can take out, yeah, dump nice. it out just real just quick. Pour it out and put it back together. And then it's got a the hose storage. Uh, it wraps around the container um, instead of I'm like that basically. It wraps around and then it has a place to to hook on right back here. Whoop, right up here. <laughs> it has a place to hook on. It's just like a little brake bleeder deal. So if if I was doing it, it would never get wrapped around it. It would just get done like it is right now. Just <laughs> there we go. If it got rolled up because most of the time. The next person's gonna grab it. It ain't ever gonna get put back up right. So, what do those run? You know, let me look and see. There's the part number for you guys. So it looks like uh, online price right now looking like like two oh nine. So somewhere in there. Okay. So if you're doing a whole lot of brake systems or you know, maybe you're the brake guy of the shop. This would be a good tool to get and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I think the pressurized ones are a little more. So, I mean, I wouldn't buy it if I did brakes here or there. But it'll definitely, um, especially when you start messing with the ones that have the ABS uh, modules and stuff on them. Yeah. And you change those out, it gets so much air in there. Uh, I know some of them require you to use a computer and then, you know, pump it up, hold it. Now break it loose and it tells you everything on the computer some of them don't so this would be a good mm -hmm. system um, and then also if you're dealing with uh, brakes just locking up occasionally this may be one of those things that you go to that wheel and you mess with the, the brake the flexible brake hose and you do a couple of things to see if you can figure out why it's mm -hmm. it, usually if it's a brake hose it's broke down and it's getting hot sucking together that's something that you can kind of feel most of the time sometimes you can't but sometimes you can uh, and then I've seen people with calipers sticking. You know, this may be a deal to where you can put it on there and see what the fluid looks like. Normally, if a caliper's sticking, it, the fluid looks a little, uh, a little bad. Sometimes the fluid has nothing to do with it. It's just the piston itself. But mm -hmm. normally, you can tell that by looking at the piston and seeing that it's pitted real bad or something like that. Right. So that's always fun. Yeah. Boy. Well, yeah. Y'all got any other new stuff this week? This is all I got new this week. Um, with it being such a weird week with Thanksgiving and everything, I haven't ordered just a whole lot except for toolboxes. I seem to have ordered all them, but uh, <laughs> I haven't ordered just a whole lot because uh, this is kind of a weird time for the tool business. Everybody's trying to save money for the Black Friday shopping and everything like that. So Yeah, that's true. Uh, but we still we still want we still want stuff coming in, so uh, I'll actually start sending out bigger orders starting uh, the next day or so, getting some more stuff in, getting some new stuff. Uh, just got an email last night. We got a new tool that's being auto shipped, so I should have it by next week. Cool. Uh, but last week we talked about Nipix. Oh, Nipix had a lot of, and it's my fault. I didn't clarify. I guess to start off, I like both pairs. Yeah. I think both pairs are good. But a lot of the comments was that I wasn't using them right because they were one-way pliers. I know, I, I know they're one-way pliers. But if you look at the end of them, they've already got rust on them. So that tells you that I'm not working on brand new stuff. And the normal one thing you do when you're working on rusty stuff is you go one way and then you go the other way. Mm -hmm. that's, where they, that's where they spread open. I didn't clarify that. Uh, so yes, I know they're one-way pliers, but my main thing was this one can only open that one. When I go to do that back and forth, that one can only open up that much. That one opens up that much. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. Uh, I think they're really good pliers. I love them, but I, st I still the handles yeah. and the stuff on these. It just I do just too. Like when things. they first when they first come out and I first got my first pair, I thought these are definitely going to replace yeah. the red handle pair hands down they're going to yeah. replace them until i started using them then i was like mm, i still like the red handle ones better yeah well and you know i, I don't want to spend too long on it I, I but you know i i started to comment hey i know they're one way but 
you know, I, I try not to comment on anything. So <laughs> I haven't yet. So, but no, I know they're one way. It's not that I'm using them wrong. It's just when I'm breaking something loose, going back and forth, I don't want to have to sit there and switch it around. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things you're just going to have to get you a pair, try them out. If you like them better, that's great. It was yep. just a just a quick review on my part, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know they're one way. I actually had the bar. Uh, they have a display that you hook these on and stand on them. You know, I, I've I've did all that. I've did the display and stuff. So, yep. but yeah, they are one way. Y'all are correct. So now, do you uh? I know we talked about that brake bleeder. Do you have those brake bleeder wrenches? Don't y'all have a set that's just for? We do. We have these here. Bleeding brakes. While we're tongue tying together, I can't even say it. <laughs> bleeding brakes. Yeah, so this is the wrenches here. And I've actually had a couple of requests to send up to make a, to let them make these bigger. Well, I don't guess let them. They're going to do what they, they're going to make what they want to make. But, um, but everybody's wanting me to get them to get these in the bigger sizes because not only can they, you know, this is where your brake, they going to move and mm -hmm. move back and forth. These make those bleeder screws uh, on how to get to them and stuff a lot quicker. You know, it's got a good little angle here for most of them, yeah. but those ones that's extreme, you can do the weight you need to. But what everybody's asking about now is they're seeing them and stuff like that. They want to know if we can get them bigger for say power steering lines transmission lines stuff mm -hmm. like that you know it's basically just a, a, a crow's foot there uh, and i know they sell crow's feet that can go on ratchets and stuff like that but they really want the crow's feet wrench just that's uh that's flex there so uh, i'm gonna send it up see if we can't get something in the making but yeah who, who knows but uh i really like them too and i agree with them if you had these to where you could do power steering lines uh transmission lines I mean, so what sizes comes in at eight? This goes to eight to twelve, and I looked up earlier. Uh, we've got the standard sizes too, which ninety percent of people will argue with me that you need standard sizes too on brake plugs. But hey, they got them. Why not? Let's see if I can find. See, in the old catalog, I knew exactly where it is. Now, in the new catalog, I'm having to find it. Yeah, there we go. They got it from a half inch to 11 30 seconds on the standard size. So. Okay. What's that part number on that? Because somebody's going to want to ask. Uh, let's see. The part number on the metric is BLW5M. The standard is BLW5S. Okay. So, S for standard. standard yeah. So That's pretty cool. Be on the right. lookout for them, see if your dealer's got them, see if he can make you a deal on them, and do the easy jobs for once. There you go. I ain't nothing better than getting brake jobs. Well, I used to really like the brake jobs. <laughs> they are nice. You don't have to think. About the only you time I it. didn't like it. It's like, about like a clutch job, you know. You can just get in there, you can let your mind wander off in left field. And <laughs> be done and not know like how you got there. Yep, yeah, be like, dang, I don't remember taking that wheel off. Yeah, the only bad experience I have with brakes is I got one that the slides were stuck on, and it, mm -hmm. trying to get it out, it broke off inside the bracket, and that was fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got it out, but it was fun. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap us up this week. Hopefully, y'all liked it, and y'all learned a little something about some brake tools. Like always, if you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes are down here. If you're not subscribed, you take your finger and you click that button. That's all you got to do. Y'all have a great week and we will catch y'all next time. See ya.